Angela Farm, outlined in red, is a 24,000 acre wheat farm. It is home to a 12 acre colony of prairie dogs, outlined in blue. A red line separates native grasses on the right from wheat on the left. The arrow marks the owl's nest. Seen here, and here with the pair of burrowing owls, and here at close range. Day one, the first chick surfaces. This chick hatched in the underground burrow about two weeks ago. And later that day, the mother presents a mouse to more chicks that have emerged. By day five, the chicks begin to flap their wings. and move about in the grass surrounding the nest. Day seven, the father flies in. His feathers have been bleached by the sun. The mother's feathers are darker. She incubated eggs in the burrow. Chicks begin to show domineering behavior towards other chicks. There are two trees on Angela Farm and they block little wind. By day nine, the chicks are airborne for fleeting moments. By day 11, the parents drop off food and the chicks must divide and dismember it themselves. Some chicks are not yet particular about their roosting posture. 10 chicks. This is a big brood. Six to 11 eggs are normal with a 90% hatch rate. By day 12, parents leave food at neighboring prairie dog burrows, forcing chicks to travel from the nest and back again. Chicks respond to parents' alarm calls. And when it's safe to resurface, lull in the noon sunshine. Chicks are active at all times of the day. More in the mornings and the evenings, and more during the day than at night. By day 17, the chicks' hopping flights are catching more air. Songbird is served. By day 18, chicks are catching insects, but are still more interested in what a parent brings. Day 20, this is the last chick at the active nest, and the next day, prairie dogs move in. Day 22, the juveniles have relocated to satellite burrows and bound to whichever prairie dog mound their parents bring food. But running is still their most common form of locomotion. Day 29, here are six of at least eight surviving juveniles. A parent is in the grass on the left. The juveniles have begun to make short flights in pursuit of their parents, who lead them about the colony. By this time, the juveniles have alighted on nearly every prairie dog mound in the colony. A short-eared owl, at two and a half times the size of a burrowing owl, it is a common visitor to the prairie dog colony and a threat to juveniles and adult burrowing owls. By day 30, 
Juveniles are capable of flying while carrying prey. The juveniles in the background have white patches on their wings and lack the barring on their chest exhibited by the adult in the foreground. Tucked in its burrow, this juvenile can scan for danger in all directions. A rare rain shower douses the colony, but the owls remain active. And hours later, they are leaping on each other in practice for pouncing on rodents. Their molted buff and white feathers flutter in the breeze. Coyotes ghost through the prairie dog colony at night and would devour an unwary burrowing owl. But during the day at the nest site, reckless inattentiveness will not be witnessed by the coyotes. While the owls pass the day dust bathing, preening, and visualizing the evening's hunt. In the late afternoon, they practice low stealth flights and stationary touch and goes as the sun sets. Which prepares the juveniles for an evening of hunting with their parents throughout the section of native grasslands surrounding the colony. By day 43, the juveniles are capable of sustained flight and perch on the fence line between the wheat field and the native grasses. By day 44, the juveniles more aggressively defend their burrows against prairie dogs. And the prairie dogs are relieved when the owls are not at home. Greatly relieved. Chestnut collared longspurs are the most common songbird residing in the grasslands surrounding the colony and likely fall victim to the burrowing owls. But not this burrowing owl, not yet. Badgers are major predators of burrowing owls, especially at nest sites. Molting can be an active process. This prairie dog is about to get bold. The juvenile with wings on display has new brown bars popping up indiscriminately on its chest. Up close with the short-eared owl, 32 bird species were once recorded as prey items at one of these owl's nests. But it did not catch this juvenile, but neither did this juvenile catch this desert cottontail. Day 56, the juveniles are still responsive to their parents' alarm calls. They get low. Then three juveniles scamper into a burrow. And the next day, a juvenile and another in the background on the right react to a raptor circling overhead. Northern Harriers are the most common diurnal raptor to hunt the colony. Prairie dog alarm calls give an extra layer of protection against raptors. Mice, the owl's daily bread, are nightly visitors at the old owl nest and have been since a week after the owls moved out. This prairie falcon is capable of sneak attacks on owls on the wing as they hunt and as they rest perched atop prairie dog mounds. It's a beetle! Jumping on its siblings has paid off, and now it is rewarded with a tasty snack. Oh no, it escapes. Day 68, at the end of August, there are at least seven juveniles. Day 77 and behind schedule. This is the first badger to find the nest site. By day 78, the owls are rarely seen. Some may have migrated. 
and the prairie dogs are delighted. The owls no longer bother to defend their burrows. Day 87. This is the last owl. <laughs>